I want to start off by, first of all, expressing my really heartfelt appreciation to Paul and Kathleen from the FLC and really the support that we've been receiving from the Federal Laboratory Consortium, uh, a group that we've been, you know, talking with for now probably about the, almost a year, and especially the fact that there has been this heightened awareness and interest in water technology and water solutions. And um, I, I have to say I was quite excited to hear Bruce's comments from OSTP to be able to hear about the priority that the FLC and the uh, administration collectively as a whole and right from the White House are really putting on water. Uh, you know, in this country we have you know, certainly address issues as far as energy have gotten heightened interest for many decades. Uh, but I think that the realization is, is that water is that most critical resource. Um, and as Bruce talked about was, you know, cities like Toledo that can literally be shut down for three days or four days uh, because of not having access to safe, fresh water. And obviously the what's going on in the western part of the United States where there's water shortages. So it really um, brings into focus that water is not something we, you know, as an issue that's helping or is an issue across the world, um, but I think it's really evidence that it's happening here in the United States as well. So to give you just a, a, a sense of really what the Water Council is, uh, we are an organization that was started up uh, roughly about five to six years ago, and it was a realization that we had um, a strong water technology cluster in the Milwaukee area. And what I talk about that is the fact that our history really goes back to uh, water in many respects. So I'm showing you a picture here of, you know, certainly the breweries uh, of one of our old breweries, Miller Brewing. And it's important to be able to really reference that. In fact, the name Milwaukee is a Native American name, meaning gathering place by the waters. And so, you know, the Native Americans came here to farm and fish and to grow, uh, you know, um, um, food or, and, and to be able to, you know, get food for their families as well. And, you know, certainly after the Native Americans came the, the French, and when the Germans came, uh, they started brewing beer. And why that's important, and I reference that, is because of the industry that we represent today in Milwaukee really have its roots going back to these breweries uh, because these were the suppliers that were making the, the pumps and the valves and the meters and the pipes and the fixtures that made sure that all of these big, heavy, large water users were uh, functioning and operating over periods of time. And so those businesses, many of them are, you know, just like these breweries, over 150 years old. And it was a discovery back uh, about eight or nine years ago that we saw that we had this high density of industry that was here. Uh, and as evidence right now, we have companies that embrace this full water cycle. So it's taking uh, water out, it's dealing with the water, cleaning it, it's using it, recleaning it, and putting it back. And within this space, we have 170 water technology companies. And I want to stress is that this is a, something that we look on in a very strict fashion in terms of uh, defining companies that are addressing water quality and quantity solutions. Um, principally, obviously, because we are located on uh, the Great Lakes, as well as the rivers and lakes, we are focused on fresh water, but that is now starting to expand in terms of how can we utilize our technology research that's going on within the region that might help issues to deal with seawater as well. Not only do we have a strong density of water technology companies uh, like Xylem, uh, A.O. Smith, Badger Meter, Rexnord, Evoqua, uh, Veolia. Um, but we also have some very strong academic programs, and most notably with the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee and the School of Freshwater Sciences. 
which has the only school of freshwater sciences in the United States, but we've got multiple engineering programs. We also have uh, law programs, business programs, all again around the area of water technology and commercialization as well. About four years ago, um, we decided that as we were building out the Water Council and really taking advantage of the companies that were already here in this region, as well as the academic programs, and if we were going to start up new businesses and ultimately attract other businesses, we decided that what we wanted to do is to build out a what we call the Global Water Center, which is the facility that I'm speaking to you from today. It is a one-of-a-kind facility. It is a restoration of an old warehouse that um, 98,000 square feet that is devoted entirely to, towards water technology commercialization. And that's where we believe that we can be a great ally and assistance with the Federal Laboratory Consortium, and in that same vein, the members of the FLC can be great partners of ours, uh, both at the company level as well as the academic programs. Within this old warehouse, we have close to 50 different businesses and organizations. The top two floors are universities. The uh, top floor is University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee, where they have their labs that are uh, focused on commercialization, and on the second floor, Marquette University. And I think as a demonstration of really the, the goal here of collaboration, which we think is rather unique, are two universities that are in the same you know, city of Milwaukee that are working in a collaborative form. And, and a simple standpoint is UW-Milwaukee was in that space first, and as Marquette was moving in, they did something which was very novel, and they asked the other university if they could share their labs and their equipment and not duplicate it one floor below, and that they would put in equipment that was not available on the, on the top floor. So I think that's a demonstration of being able to collaborate between universities, but that's extended throughout the entire building, where we have very large businesses that are located in the building, from uh, Rex Nord, Veolia, A.O. Smith, Badger Meter, where we have senior vice presidents, CEOs in the building that are also connected literally across the hall from entrepreneurs and startups. And while the Water Council was largely uh, started up by very large corporations, I would argue that we are now become much more focused around startups and small businesses and entrepreneurs. Because there's not much that we can necessarily do for the large corporations to be able to expand their operations globally. But what they are interested in is the research and the innovations that are coming out of the federal labs, out of the universities, and most notably out of these entrepreneurs. And so what through this building as well as the extension beyond this building is to really cultivate the entrepreneurs and to feed them out into the commercial marketplace. This building that we're in, Global Water Center, is completely full. We are now moving on to our second building, and literally four minutes away from here is the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee School of Freshwater Sciences. So we have developed very much a water technology district, but as I wrap up my comments, I want to emphasize that what we have placed as an emphasis is the acceleration of this technology that's coming out of entrepreneurs, out of the universities, as well as the Federal Lab Consortium. And as Paul talked about in his opening comments, we together with the FLC have made a commitment at the White House Water Summit last March to really work in partnership to be able to find the research that's going on, both uh, water and water-related research in all of the different federal labs across the, uh, across the country, to be able to start to organize that and to start to promote that out to the industry so that they have easier access to this information as well. You'll hear later on this afternoon 
about an initiative that we just launched three weeks ago called the ICE Institute. ICE stands for Innovation, Commercialization, and Exchange. And it's a, a novel program that we're working with uh, SF, FLC um, members. We are, are already targeted two of the labs to begin that discussions to be able to start to dive in, literally to be able to find the research that's going on because oftentimes they're not labeled as water uh, in this research. And so we've got to do, and I'm sorry for the pun, but a deeper dive. And to be able to uncover this rich opportunity that can help solve the water issues, both again, quality and quantity, and then being able to go through a filtering process and ultimately get it out into the marketplace because the labs are doing some great, great novel research um, but if they sit on the shelves, then we're not following through the whole process. And so you'll hear more about that. So I'm just going to conclude my remarks with that and, and again to emphasize that we are really very pleased and excited to be able to work with the federal labs uh, as a consortium, but individually as well, to be able to advance this water research uh, out into the marketplace, and we also look forward to working with uh, our partners with OSTP and OMB as well. So with that, I'll hand it uh, back to the moderator. Thank you.